Amanda Maffei lives here in Hopkinton. She doesn't have far to go to come and share her songs today. She grew up on the North Shore by the ocean with music all around her. And she said that she believed her mother wanted to be surrounded by music, and so she had all five of her children take music lessons so that there would be this constant feel of music. For Amanda, it became, music became her closest friend, and she started her songwriting in her teen years, she said, when she had a lot to figure out. She recalls when she was 20, she sang for tips at a restaurant in Colorado. And that's when she'd go to tables and ask for a request for a song. And if she didn't, couldn't come up with the exact song, uh, she'd try to think of something similar. And she noted when asked one of her most memorable moments sharing a song, when she decided to sing a song titled No Hands Clapping for a particular woman. And when she was done, the woman had tears in her eyes and thanked her for singing it, and then later told her she was going through a divorce and that hearing the song really helped her. Amanda has been teaching music in her life. She's been raising her family. You might see her on the streets of Hopkinton or on Marathon Day running the marathon as well. She's quite a runner. And most recently, she has been initiated a project uh, with her song, Run Boston Strong, uh, that addresses the, the Boston uh, Marathon tragedy. And uh, perhaps she'll share more about that. But in conclusion, I'll just share one quote Amanda gave me about sharing art with community. She said, when we share our poetry and song to weave a richer living fabric together, it helps us, and I can, for me, I can look beyond my small fears and feel buoyed by commonality. And so here she is today to share some of her original songs with us this morning. Please give her a warm, welcoming round of applause, Amanda Maffei. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm going to start off with uh, songs from family. Uh, I have a granddaughter, Cora, who's three years old. And uh, this is one of those moments when you, know, you play with these little kids and you think everything's going just great and all of a sudden the tables turn. So this is called uh, Your Reprieve. Don't crush your butterfly, babe, poor plastic rainbow butterfly. I flip you up and over, Grandma, do it again. Gidman girl with wiggling toes, hair flying wildly past my nose. My heart beats all the flutter, may this moment never end. As I flip you up and down, your laughter drowns all other sounds. Legs cartwheeling here to there, my love's cartwheeling everywhere. Don't crush your butterfly, babe, poor plastic rainbow butterfly. Flip you up and over, Grandma, do it again. Different thing, girl with wiggling toes, hair flying wildly past my nose. My heart beats all a flutter, may this moment never end. You've reached an end, I don't perceive. You've scrambled down to get reprieve. The chase is on, or so I thought. The truth comes clear, they're on the spot. You rush into your mama's arms, look back at me, eyes, five alarms, say, scary, scary, them's your words. I pull up short and feel absurd. But life's like that and so it goes, we do our best and then, who knows, live our days from now to now, I love you so, my little gal. Don't crush your butterfly, babe, poor plastic rainbow butterfly. Flip you up and over, Grandma, do it again. Giggling girl with wiggling toes, hair flying wildly past my nose. My heart beats all a flutter, may this moment never end. May this moment never Thank you. Thanks. So, my wonderful daughter, who's now 27 years old, uh, when she was in college, lived with some roommates. And 
you know how uh, we all, you know, get used to our quirks and the way we are and the things that make us uniquely ourselves. And for me, it starts to feel at least, feel like a big kind of comfortable armchair. And uh, I think it's normal, you know, I think that's, that's the way things are. And then all of a sudden, how, uh, you know, you get somebody else's perspective. And uh, it's like, oh, really? So uh, this is a moment that my daughter shared with me that happened uh, with her and her roommates at college. It's called Mama's Home Cooking. She walked in, stepping over the threshold. An odiferous feast, she surmised. Smells like carrots left cooking too long on the stove. Her friends looked over with some surprise. OK, how could you tell what had happened? Before this, we've burned nothing here. But you knew right away, she said, what can I say? I've been schooled by the best through my years. Having burnt carrots for dinner, grilled caramelized smell. It's my mama's home cooking that I know so well. As her kitchen fills up with aromas galore, that's my mama's home cooking. Now need I say more? There's that soy powder topping her oatmeal, layered thick by a mom's loving hand. Took one bite, I was done. It stuck fast to my tongue like a generous helping of sand. And again, there's that tempeh for protein. Firm tofu rounds out her cuisine. For a charred crusty outer skin wax as divine and steam tempeh. You get what I mean? Having burnt carrots for dinner, grilled caramelized smell, that's my mama's home cooking that I know so well as her kitchen fills up with aromas galore. That's my mama's home cooking. Now need I say more? Now and then, I do dine at mom's table. She does make a mean mac and cheese. But when strange smells arise, I regress and tell lies. Gotta go, ma, scorch-phobic disease. Having burnt carrots for dinner, grilled caramelized smell. That's my mama's home cooking that I know so well as her kitchen fills up with my mama's home cooking now need I say more that's my mama's home cooking now need I say more all right thank you you're all invited over <laughs> so uh, you know, there's nothing like family to really uh, let you know who you are. <laughs> and sometimes it takes a while, but hopefully, you know, eventually uh, we get closer and closer to, to knowing that. Um, when my, again, daughter was, uh, Christina was almost 18, a week to the day before Christina's 18th birthday, she was gifted with a little brother, yeah. Sam, who's actually in the audience with uh, his dad, there he is, there's the hand. So, um, so uh, just uh, a little while ago, uh, Sam's dad and I, <laughs> Sam's dad, <laughs> Peter and I went to um, Sam's fourth grade open house. And, uh, and there they handed out a bunch of pamphlets. And those pamphlets had a uh, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, 10-year-old, the characteristics of them. So Peter started reading you know, those. And, and then he hands it over to me, he goes, take a look at this. And I read the nine-year-old, I said, that's Sam, to the T. <laughs> this list of characteristics of a nine-year-old. Um, and so uh, the very next day, this song uh, was born. It's called, um, what's it called? It's called, anyway, you'll hear what it's called because it's in the chorus. <laughs> Oh, fallen behind, that's what it's called. You see how far I fell behind, I couldn't come up with it. So it goes like this. Laundry in the 
kitchen, laundry on the stairs, laundry all over your bedroom floor. Tell me how you choose what you wear. What I gave you clean somehow now is too dirty. What I thought was dirty you wore one more time. Why is it just when I feel like I'm getting ahead that I'm really just falling behind? You read your books in the morning. I say it's time to get dressed. By the time you're done with your tirade against tyranny, I feel like I need to confess. But I thought I said it loving and reasoned. You heard me unfair and blithely unkind. Why is it just when I feel like I'm getting ahead, I'm really just falling behind? Brood and worried at nine. Criticize all the time. Need adults to be fun. So now all us parents must find our funny and lighthearted one. We gave you 10 for the book fair. You came home spending 13. So you'll pay him back with allowance. Oh, great, now you're punishing me to be mean. You know I'm just way too old for this training. Let's bring in the cool mom who's right all the time. Why is it just when I feel like I'm getting ahead that I'm really just falling behind? Why is it just when I feel like I'm getting ahead, I'm really just falling behind? <laughs> That's Sammy. Thank you. There's, by the way, loads of good times. <laughs> we'll see him. Uh, Sammy, quiet. This, <laughs> this is my gig, not yours. <laughs> so uh, I am going to, I did actually bring a recording of the um, couple versions of the song Run Boston Strong that I did write for the uh, marathon. This, um, there's a, one more song before we get to that. So uh, just to give a little heads up to the folks who are running the CDs in the back there. But this song here, uh, you know, in, um, in psychology, uh, when I studied it, when I was uh, becoming a teacher, Piaget, Jean Piaget, had this, uh, this theory of uh, equilibrium and disequilibrium. Basically, it's like when something comes into your life that totally throws off everything you ever thought, and then eventually you assimilate things and you get that, that's disequilibrium and then eventually you assimilate things and it gets back to equilibrium. So like you think you have a hold on the world and then something else comes in and you find out you don't and then <laughs> So this was one of those moments, I was at a concert with Claudia Schmidt and Sally Rogers were performing and Claudia Schmidt uh, delivered this line that I just went, what? You know, and, uh, but sure enough, like I said, you know, music helps me work things out. And, um, and shortly thereafter, uh, this song came into being. It's called uh, Waste in Time. It goes like this. If you enjoy wasting time then that's not time wasted when you enjoy what you do then time's not wasted on you by the way this is a song like between the small self and big self i think you'll be able to tell which is which Everything that I once thought brought meaning to my life, to my being, now turned topsy-turvy, curveballs thrown so swervy, no straight line for my mind. A spirit speaks confusing, steadfast rules amusing, that's enough, I give up, for you say non-change stands behind our changing ways. If you enjoy wasting time, then that's not time wasted. For when you enjoy what you do, 
then time's not wasted on you. Ah, oh, you can't mean this, it's so preposterous. Can't you see we're here for a short time only? Nose to the grindstone, one truth we've all known. Fall short in this life, a turn in the next. If you enjoy wasting time, then that's not time wasted. For when you enjoy what you do, then time's not wasted on you. This is one of the hardest sections of the song for me to get through, just to listen to the guitar playing. Let's just act as if this never happened. I'll go my way, you go yours. I know I prayed for freedom, but you keep leading me astray. There's just no way, oh, so easy. Bird and light feel queasy, can't be serious, must be delirious. So dark night, stay or choose light. For if you enjoy wasting time, then that's not time wasted. For when you enjoy what you do, then time's not wasted. Joy's not wasted. Your life goes unwasted on you. It's wasting time. Thank you. You know, what really brought that into light for me was being the mother of teenagers. Because they waste so much time. <laughs> but I'll tell you, not, not really. I mean, this just is a big learning for me. So Run Boston Strong is a uh, song that I wrote about a week after the tragedy, the, uh, the bombing. And... Um, it got some interest on uh, YouTube, and then in, here in Hopkinton, we made with uh, mostly Hopkinton folks, just two two outsiders, who were insiders anyway. We're all insiders, but uh, they um, we made a recording together, and then it was suggested that I have it orchestrated. So I had it orchestrated. Uh, WBZ at one point was um, hoping that the Boston Pops would do it for the Esplanade concert, but that did not come to fruition. But hopefully. Uh, before the next marathon, there will be an orchestra that performs it. That is the, that is my quest, and we will see. You know, I'm learning that you just go ahead and you, you do the best you can, and and leave no stone unturned, and see what happens. So that's a very new concept for me. Um, I was talking earlier today, saying I'm, I'm one who usually would not, who are, who have lived a fair amount of my life, sort of holding back and not doing too much because I don't want to fail. So now I say, okay, let's bring it on, you know? And uh, so. so I asked the folks if they'd be kind enough to play uh, these three snippets. The first one is the Hopkinton, a little bit of the Hopkinton piece that we recorded with Hammond organ, bass, drums, and singers, and piano. And then the second is the orchestrated version. That is just my home studio. We're having a professional demo done. I'm talking really fast. I feel like an auctioneer. Um, so <laughs> I'm not auctioning anything, though. But uh, I just want to uh, give you a little um, a little taste of what's coming up and that do the orchestral version, if done by a full orchestra, will just be, which is what I wanted. When I wrote the piece, I felt like I wanted the people who especially were physically affected by the blast and heard that blast to be able to hear as, good, as big a sound for good, you know, which is I believe what this orchestral version would be, as big a sound for good to counteract that sound for destruction that they must have heard when they were at that finish line. So if you'd be so kind to play, uh, it's about uh, maybe about two minutes, the three different snippets. Each one.
such a powerful chorus of people singing. One of our chorus members actually is Cheryl Melody, who's in the audience. Cheryl, if you'd raise your hand. Um, it was a uh, wonderful group who sang that background. Now here's the orchestral version. Now this is synthesized, so... <laughs> That's the opening of the song, and then I picked up another little snippet that's the middle of the song. And then here's the middle part. Many states, towns, countries came to celebrate. So those would be like real violins, a whole violin section behind. That's it. That's uh, Run Boston Strong. If you would find it in your hearts uh, to just send out good, positive prayer-like energy that, uh, that will come to fruition for these folks, that would be great. I'm actually uh, registered to run uh, the marathon. I did get in. I had a qualifier for that. So, um, you know, and I just think of the folks who are going to be running it, who is going to take the real act of courage and trust to, to do that. And... Um, so, oh, thank you. All right, last song I'd like to share with you. Um, so that's one project that I've been working on lately, and there's another one that um, has sort of taken the, the back burner for a while. I'm, I'm in the process of writing six children's stories to go with six children's songs that I've written. And uh, I'm on the last story, and I've been on the last story for about the last half a year. But it's a story that uh, part of it takes place in the Arctic. So this is... This is a, a song I, I came across an artist, Kenojouac, who's from Baffin Bay, who did a uh, stamp. A Canadian stamp. Uh, well, she did a print of an it called the Enchanted Owl, and it became a Canadian stamp because Canada loved it so well. And uh, and sh when they asked her about creating her art, she said, "I just make it more beautiful." And that's her quest is to make things more beautiful. And this, uh, when I heard her, um, she made a, a statement one time that I heard, and I and I wrote a song from it. This is your typical. I'm talking way too much. This is your typical quantum physics meets Arctic tundra song. <laughs> it's called This One Thing. There is only this one To live to see this break of day that's dawning And as the light fills in our world We yawn in photon songs Souls long to sing All hoots her morning thunder Humpback blows her breath-filled blast Earth's rotation and chiffon rays, sun grins, we've turned to her at last. There is only this one thing, to live to see this break of day that's dawning. And as the light fills in our world, we yawn in photon songs, souls long to sing. Sunless winter lasts for 
six weeks. Arctic tundra dressed in blacks. Life keeps surging through these veins of ice cold cells, sure and deep as sled dog runner tracks. Matters burgeoning around us. Chaos superseding all. Born into this ancient reverie. Alice in Wonderland, free fall. There is only this one thing. To live to see this break of day that's dawning. And as the light fills in our world, we yawn in photon songs, souls long to sing. Only this one thing you can do, only this one thing, 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 only this one thing. Thank you very much. Thanks. Then there